Welcome, everybody, to the Oklahoma Drill Podcast. I am your host, Andrew. We have our co-hosts, Matt and Vitor, here as well. This week is going to be our schedule review episode. Cover the schedule as a whole since it was released last week. Go over where it's tough, where it's weak, where we think the big storylines are. Uh, we'll run through the whole schedule in order really quick here. We got week one at Carolina Panthers. Week two, home against the New England Patriots. Week three, at Denver Broncos. Week four, home against the Titans. Week five is listed as a home game, but it's actually in London against the Atlanta Falcons. That will be followed by a bye for week six. Sunday, at New England Patriots. Uh, Week seven, excuse me, at New England Patriots. Week eight, Cincinnati Bengals, uh, home game as well. Then we got a short trip at Indianapolis for week nine on Thursday night, followed by home against the Buffalo Bills two weeks later for week Week 10, week 11, home again against the Miami Dolphins. Week 12 at Houston Texans. Week 13, home against the Philadelphia Eagles. Week 14, home against the New Orleans Saints. Week 15 at the Miami Dolphins. Week 16, home against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Week 17, home against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And finally, week seven, uh, week 18, the newly crafted week 18, at Buffalo against the Buffalo Bills. That is the schedule for the Jets in 2021. Um, certainly not an easy schedule, certainly not an overly daunting schedule. I would say perfectly fair and even down the middle overall. Guys, what do you think overall? Uh, overall, I think uh, we're in a good place to do a lot better than last year, for sure, uh, depending on how things fall. Uh, it's Yeah, it's very evenly spread. I sort of wish the bye week was a little later in the year. Uh, week six is a little early for my liking, mm-hmm. um, but it's it's coming after the London game. Uh, but overall, I think uh, if we do well in the beginning, we can uh, hit a a nice a nice uh, run before we hit the the final stretch. Yeah, I feel the same way. I feel like this is a schedule where the Jets can stretch it out. They can stretch out some wins. They can stretch out some losses. Like. They have the first four, the first five games that are rough. Then they get New England at home, and then they face some opponents that they can beat, like Cincinnati, Houston, Eagles, Saints. It's like the Jets can string a couple wins, then lose a couple. String a couple, lose a couple. I feel like if the Jets can pull some of those upsets off, they could be playing some meaningful games in December. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I can definitely see it being very up and down. This is a very much a, a schedule where on paper it looks like if the Jets can win the games they're supposed to and pull off a few surprises they might just be good enough to get in as a wild card I don't want to be going too far I think it's a possibility but it, again they would have to be the Jets would, are never good at beating the teams they're supposed to so that's um, yet to be seen um, we're going to go through we're going to go month by month break down the schedule start off with September at the beginning got three games in September being uh, against the Panthers against the Patriots and against the Broncos uh, I would say the biggest game for this month is obviously week one at Carolina Panthers the storylines are plenty obviously Sam Darnold is going to be the starting quarterback it's Zach Wilson's first start Matt Rule really should have been the Jets head coach and you know he could be Zach Wilson's coach right now in a different universe and it's going to be an interesting uh, team, interesting game for every team involved. Uh, personally, I think if you're looking at it from the angles of what's going to be the biggest, most important thing to watch, it's going to be Sam Darnold's deep ball because Robert Sala has shown what to do against Sam Darnold in his mind, and that is play close to the line of scrimmage, send guys up the middle, bring pressure, dare him to beat you deep. And for three and a half quarters, he won't. And I think that sort of plays into our strength, too. Because, well, he has Anderson and, and DJ Moore. He's got two very good deep threats Absolutely. that he might not be able to use properly because that's his, his uh, least strongest aspect of his game. So he's going to have to really dial in his short to intermediate passes with McCaffrey and, and Marshall. Um, and he's really going to need to do that against our dominant front four. So he might not have the time to really hark on those uh, those long developing plays. So it's up to Saul to really dial in and make sure these guys are covered for at least the first few seconds of, the, of each play. You know, I can see Sal game planning a bit differently for this game in 2021 than he did in San Francisco. I feel like the Jets 
defensive line matches up well against the Panthers' offensive line. Just like 49, the 49ers' D-line matched up well against our O-line last year. But Salah lost in the first half. Both Nick Boza and uh, I think it was Solomon Thomas yep, or who Solomon else? Thomas. Due to injuries. On back-to-back And plays. he adjusted. Yeah, and he had to adjust. If the Jets are healthy, and they will be for sure, absolutely, thanks God, in week one, I think Salah will see some like vanilla Robert Salah defense. Rushing forward, trusting Carl Lawson, Kenny Willens, Franklin Myler, Myers to be it, like Cam Irving, mm-hmm. Dennis Daly, Pat Elfling right now is listed as, as the Panthers starting right guard. And let the, let the young defensive backs play cover. Like, let the Marcus Joyner hold deep middle, avoid those deep bombs to Robbie Anderson, because I think Joe Brady will try to throw some nine routes on the Jets, inexperienced corners, and I think Bryce Hall will hold up. And I really feel like this is a good matchup for the Jets, also offensively, right? So yeah, when you see the the the, the Jets offensive line just revamp the offensive line that we got, if the Jets can run the football on Brian Burns and Derek Brown, they basically win the game. Yep. They win the game, right? So I feel like this is a game where the Jets will try to play some ball control and they will indeed dare send Arnold to throw you. I don't know if beat, but they'll say, Hey Sam, beat us by throwing the football. Read our defense, find the softest spots on the zone. And I like this matchup to start the year. Yeah, that Lawson – is Irving even going to be the left tackle? It's it's a funny team because their best tackle yeah. is their right tackle with Moten. Yeah. So yeah. they yeah. they got like a who's who on the left side with Elfline and, and Irving or maybe Little. We, we don't even know. So Lawson again and, and Q against that left side of the offensive line, I will take our guys any day. Uh, yeah. And then on the other side of the ball, it's, it's all about stopping burns. Yep. Uh, because other than him, I don't see many uh, anybody else really having that much of an impact. Uh, you got a, a couple of young guys that need to develop some more, so maybe they they take that step. But as of right now, I see Burns as the number one priority. Take him out. Yep, we win. Yeah, um, I think I'm a little less confident than you guys. Uh, I definitely think this is a winnable game, and I do think the Jets match up very very well. Um, I think it's, you know, we got to remember it's Zach Wilson's first start and Matt Rule's going to do what yep. he can to confuse him too. And I think the, like we're talking about, call comes down to being able to run the ball and run on Brian Burns and slow him down. And I think, you know, the Jets have done everything they can to make sure that they can do that. Now, the question for me is going to come when the Jets eventually, and it will happen, eventually call play action. And J.C. Horn is going to probably be the Panthers' number one corner. So I imagine he would be on Corey Davis. So this should be Denzel Mims coming out party. This should be Denzel Mims. I'm here. It's my second year. I've been healthy this whole time. I got a quarterback who I have great chemistry with that loves throwing balls back shoulder. And that's all I do is catch balls back shoulder. You know, this should, I'm expecting a really, really big game. And if Denzel Mims doesn't have a big game, then we're going to have to see if somebody else can step up. Now, defensively, I completely agree with everything you guys are saying, which is we don't need to be completely exotic in coverage. We're going to rush for, tr- see if your offensive line can hold up, drop in coverage, do what we can do. Now, the only thing I'm worried about there is who's covering Christian McCaffrey out the backfield. And I hope it's Jamie yeah. and Sherwood. And I hope it's it's Jamie and Sherwood coming out and playing fantastic in his first start at Will Linebacker and against one of the most dangerous matchup nightmares in the NFL and Christian McCaffrey and playing respectably enough to slow him down. If they can slow Christian McCaffrey down, I think that's the win because they just, Sam Darnold is not going to be able to be accurate enough deep to where it's okay. Even if Robbie Anderson's open, he still has to hit him and you're not going to worry as much about deep coverage. You got LaMarcus Joyner playing single high to help out. Can you tackle McCaffrey in space? If you do, I think you win the game. I agree. That, that's a great point. Like there are two keys, right? Stopping McCaffrey and containing Brian Burns. But, like yeah. we're laying out here the plan, right? Yep. Yeah, I completely agree. And be, this is, I want to see the Jets. This is a game I would love to see them win like 17-7. Like, I want to see them play ball control. I want to see them run the ball, you know, keep Brian Burns on the field, tire him out, and, you know, we'll basically play the Panthers the way teams played the Jets when the Jets had Sam Darnold. 
Yeah. That's yeah, it. That's it. <laughs> you just got to take, take those intermediate passes and short passes away, make them beat you deep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then three downs later, score on offense. <laughs> exactly. It's... It's a fun matchup. I, I'm not, I'm really looking forward to this one. Yeah. I think it's definitely a winnable game. Yeah, this is a game I'm going to go to. Actually, I bought my tickets the other day. I'm going to drive over to Charlotte for that game. Should be a lot of fun. I yeah. am envious. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, that'll move us into October. Um, handful of games in October. First off is home game uh, with Tennessee Titans, then London against the Atlanta Falcons uh, at New England and followed by home against the Bengals on Halloween. Out of these four games, obviously, I would say the big storyline is going to be the London game. The Jets haven't played in London since 2015 when they decimated the Miami Dolphins. Um, but it'll be interesting to see them go there. A new, uh, you know, coaching staff is in their first year. This is another wrinkle they're going to have to adjust to. Uh, Falcons have the same thing. New coaching staff. Um I think this is going to be a really, really good game. I'm not quite sure who wins, but I just think it's going to be a really, really good game to watch in terms of just entertainment value. Yeah. I feel like this is going to be an offensive game, right? Yeah. I feel like even though our defense are excited about our front four, the the Atlanta Falcons, they have Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, Mm -hmm. and Kyle Pitts. No matter who you have defensively, they will be hard to stop. And I really, really like our skill players too. And I don't like the Falcons defensive players. Like no. I don't see a great player beside Deion Johnson on that defense. So I could see a like a great game from Zach Wilson during the whole country early in the morning. Zach Wilson's throwing bombs. Mm-hmm. And the Jets are competing hard against this great Falcons offense. Could be an exciting game. I really don't know if we're gonna win this game. For me, it's a kind of flip right now. I have to see the season. I have to see these offense and how it looks yeah. early in the season. But it, I, I feel like this is going to be a great offensive game. Great offensive game. Yeah, outside of Grady Jarrett, there's really not much on that defense to really get yeah, excited Jarrett's about for game. Atlanta. Uh-huh. Uh, so I think if if uh, Sol- Sol- can uh, really bear down on, on defense, then our offense has a really good chance to come away with a big one here. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's like I said, I think it's going to be really entertaining. Um, I, London games are always wacky, regardless of who is playing. They're just they're always weird. There's going to be something happens that is going to be unexpected. Uh, you know, this could be this could be the only safety the Jets get all season. will come in London just because that's what London games are. They're just weird. Um, but yeah, I think it is certainly winnable. I think, like Vitor said, it's kind of a coin flip for me right now because I could definitely just see the the Falcons' offensive talent and the sheer number of people we would have to cover just being too much for us. And Zach Wilson could play great, and the Jets could lose 35-28. And who knows? But it's going to be fun. That's what I do know. And because it's, it's London, be it could be the exact opposite. It could be yeah. a defensive match. Yeah, know, yeah, so. right. Yeah, right. And then we'll yeah. go to London and the Jets win 3 nothing. Like, yeah, it's <laughs> it, it could, anything could happen in London. What happens in London stays in London. Uh, Hopefully right. the wind this comes a, back. Hopefully. <laughs> this is a game where I could see the Jets playing big nickel on basically like 80% of the snaps with Ashton yeah. Davis on the field. It, depending on how the Falcons use Kyle Pitts, I really, mm-hmm. really, really would like to see the Jets utilizing Ashton Davis in this game. I don't know if they plan on utilizing Marcus May as the man up on tight ends, but this is a game that I would like to see Ashton Davis playing well with both May and Joyner rotating deep to, you know, stop those deep balls to Julio, to Calvin Ridley, and forcing Matt Ryan to work underneath. And I'm just looking at this depth chart. That's that's a lot of monsters on that offense. Ridley, Jones, yeah. Gage, Pitts. That's, they got Julio uh, Paris on also. That, that firepower is a lot. I yeah. really don't know if our guys can be able to knock that down for an extended period of time. Eventually, they're going to break through. So okay. really, our best matchup is against their offensive line. Can our defenders get home against yep. Tennessee and Mayfield? Uh, it's it's yep. an okay offensive line uh, that they Atlanta has, but... I don't think it's anything great. I don't think it's anything that our defensive line can can't handle. I think they'll they'll actually have a pretty good game and they're going to need to. Yeah, oh yeah. That's where the Jets win the game. Their D-line yeah. wins this game for them 110%. If if they can get home on Matt Ryan, if they can pressure him and get him to either throw the ball early or sack him before he can get throw it deep to Julio, 
this is this could be a this could be a stomping like like we're saying in London anything could happen if the Jets defensive line has one of those days where they come out and they're just unblockable this could be a destruction and conversely yeah. if the Jets offensive line has one of those days where they can't block anybody it could be the same thing the other way and it's it, it's certainly it's going to be really 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 fun i think this might be the most fun game to watch on the entire yeah. schedule yeah, I think, so really yeah. yeah. I think this and Carolina are the and two top candidates. I think so as well. And it's an early game. Well, so we'll be done before uh, lunchtime. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Wake up not knowing what happened and then have a whole full slate of one o'clock games to watch. <laughs> Looking forward to it. <sighs> All right. Well, that takes us to November. A handful of games in November, the first of which being a Thursday night trip to Indianapolis against the Colts. Um, Then we have home two home games against the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins, closing out the month at Houston against the Texans. Um, We had just you know talked about this off air, guys, but we were looking through the schedule and we got to Indianapolis in Week Nine on Thursday night, and this is the turning point of the season. This could be where the Jets are either for real or the Jets are still building a lot or the Jets are almost there. This is where we're going to find out because hey, Thursday night games are never easy. It's a short week. It's also a road game, so that makes it even harder. You're going to have barely have time after you get home on Sunday night from the last game against the Bengals. Turn around, start prepping for Indy, and two days later, you're, you're on the way. Um, so at this point, the Jets could be quickly going over the schedule. This would be week nine. It's possible the Jets could be four and four at this point. I don't yeah. think that's unreasonable. I don't think that's I think unreasonable could, at all. No, I don't think that's unreasonable at all. Four and four, perfectly well in the hunt, not, you know, right in the middle of everything, dead even. And you go to Indianapolis. And if you come out of Indy with a win on Thursday night, and it's five and four, you're at five and four going into week 10, you get 10 days of rest. And then you get two division opponents back to back at home in the Bills and the Dolphins. This, if the Jets hit their stride in week nine against Indy, and you're going into the Houston game at seven and four, you could be, we, this could be like, oh, we're going to, we could probably make the playoffs. This is a playoff team. Yeah. You, you go to Houston, you get a win against what I think many people are expecting to be the worst team in the NFL in the Houston Texans. Now you're at eight and four. Eight and four. All you got to do is just not plummet. And you're going to at least be a wild card. Yeah. You lose this game and you go on a slide and you lose to the Bills and you lose to the Dolphins. And now you're four and seven and your season's basically over. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a pivotal point in the season where we we'll know what we're what we're dealing with after this game. Like, will we'll, we'll mm-hmm. all will all our hopes be going towards next off season, or are we looking at the playoffs possibly? Uh, I know I'm not going to get my hopes up just yet, but I, I I want us to be in it in the end, and this will sort of be that barometer game. Yeah, and it's it's a it's tough like, matchup too. Yeah, Ooh. it's a tough matchup. You know, their O line is good, so I feel like they will be able to neutralize what our defense has in its strength. That is the defensive line. Right. But also, their receivers. I don't like the Colts' receivers. Same way, I don't like our corners. So I feel like this is an even matchup, right? And I really right. like Frank Reich, and I like Carson Wentz. So I feel like the Colts' offense, they'll be able to move the ball in the Jets, short for us, quick for us to get. These the Jets cornerbacks working and trying to buy on double moves early in the game. And defensively, they just drafted a good edge rusher. They have Buckner on the inside. Their lining linebacker core is good, and their secondary they don't have like any household name, but they're good. They're well coached. So it's a tough matchup for the Jets. If the Jets can win, or maybe you know. Let it play out against the Colts. Lose in a close game in the fourth quarter. I feel like they're going to get both Buffalo and Miami at home full of confidence. Yeah. You know, full of confidence. They'll be like, we can do it. We can string out some wins right now and fight for the playoffs. So this is a tough game. 
with huge implications on the Jets. You know, I, 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 the Colts are clear cut favorites for this game. Definitely. But make no mistake, it's Thursday night football. Carson Wentz is a silly turnover prone quarterback, and anything could happen. This could be a very, very, very good turning point for the Jets season. I don't hate Indy's receivers. So uh, you got Ty Hilton, you got Pittman, you got Campbell. You got, I don't like them. You got three guys there that can take the top off of a defense. And then I don't you like got Hilton anymore. I don't like Paris Campbell and Pittman. I thought he was going to be better in his first year. I feel like they're not great. I feel like the Jets can match them up. And the Jets corners are not great. Huh. That's, I kind of sit in the middle of you two guys where I'm, yeah. I wouldn't say that I dislike the Colts receivers, but I'm also not necessarily threatened by them. Where yeah. T.Y. Hilton, I think, I think T.Y. Hilton's better than, I think a lot of people think he's kind of washed up. I think he's better than he gets credit for still, but he doesn't have the same level of speed that he did that made him so dangerous in his heyday. Like when he was with Andrew Luck those first couple of years and it was deep bomb, deep bomb, deep bomb. Yeah. No one could run with him. He doesn't have that anymore. I think he's a better route runner and a better separator than he gets credit for. And I think he's just transitioned into more of a short underneath slot player as opposed to a deep slot player. But it's still a tough ask for anybody to cover. Um, Bryce Hall is going to lock up Michael Pittman. Bryce Hall. Yeah, I like Bryce, that. That specifically, that is like the, the Bryce Hall is, is built to cover guys like Michael Pittman. Pittman. I think he's going to, yeah. he's going to shut him down. So I, I certainly, yeah, I kind of fall in the middle. I think the, the matchup is won by our offense. The J- Zach Wilson wins this game. If the jets win this game and the jets offense wins this game. And that's, that would be the storyline is, the Jets beat the Colts. They're five and four. They got 10 days before my uh, Buffalo at home. Uh, Zach Wilson threw three touchdowns to, to beat the Colts on Thursday night. You know, that that's the story you want to see. I don't think this is a game where if the Jets win, they do it in, you know, a gritty way. I think if they win this game, they win the game because our offense did everything they could to score. And Carson Wentz made the one mistake that was too many. Jets win by three points on a late field goal or, you know, get a touchdown late to take the lead and hold it off in the fourth quarter. It's it's going to be a close game. It's going to be a huge game. I really think it's the turning point of the season. And if things go really, really poorly, it could start a skid that that gets ugly by the end of the year. If there was ever a team that I think could run against us, I think it would be the Colts because yep. of that offensive line. Yeah. And Jonathan Taylor. Marlon Mack, Naeem mm-hmm. Hines. I think they they can do a lot of things on the ground that maybe not many other teams can do. And yep. that, I think, opens up the game for the receivers that maybe aren't as good as they can be or have been. But I think with, the, with where our cornerbacks are at right now, I think they could take advantage of them. So I'm yep. not really liking this matchup very much. I like Bryce Hall against Michael Pittman, and that's it. Yep, that's about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at in the middle of you two guys. Is that I, there's a really, really good matchup, and then as we've said over and over, the other guy we don't know. Um, yeah, no, that's a big game. Um, definitely, def- I th- could be the biggest game of the year. I really think yeah. it could be. I. It's, you know, it, this is the only time this season, not counting London, which, you know, not every fan is going to get up to watch London at 930 if they're not a fan of the teams watching. This is the Jets only primetime game this year. That's, yeah. that's official. Center so, stage. Yeah, center stage. So this is what I mean. This is looking at the way it's constructed and the like everything is shaping up for this to be the pivotal game of the Jets season. And we're going to probably be going back and referencing it in either a really good way or a really bad way, depending on how things shake out. Yeah. All right, moving on. That moves us into December. Uh, Games in December, we got home against the Philadelphia Eagles, home against the New Orleans Saints at the Miami Dolphins, and the day after Christmas against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Uh, Of all these games, I would say division opponent and at Miami is certainly going to be the one to look at. The Jets, uh, at least from my memory, 
anytime they go at Miami in December, play phenomenally. Just, I don't know what it is, but Miami in December is their playground. Anyone remember Geno Smith's 158.3 passer rating game in Miami? Yeah. And that Leonard Williams game against Mm -hmm. Miami. Yeah. 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 And this could be really interesting to see because the Jets and the Dolphins, I think, are two teams that are, are very much intertwined, intertwined more so than just being division rivals. They are both teams that had multiple first round picks in the last draft. They traded away star players to do so. They have new coaches and new general managers that are still new with the organization. Flores and Greer will be in their second years, but they're still new. They're still learning. Uh, it's two teams that are trying to build to take over after the Patriots have now seemed to have been dethroned and right as the Buffalo Bills seem to be stepping right in. So it, there's a lot of similarities here. And I think this could be a game where you look at the end of 2021 and you're going, who's who's the third team in the division? And we're going to know at the end of this game. Uh, we got some good matchups here. I don't think it's... I, I, I went into this thinking that it was probably going to be a daunting task to beat the Dolphins. Uh-huh. Uh, I thought that they're a year ahead of us in, in developing their team. But you know what? Looking at these matchups, I, I'm not really scared. Uh, their defensive line, I'm a little worried about just because they're just very long and athletic. Yeah. Jalen Phillips and, against George Fant. Yikes. So they got a lot of guys that can hang with us when we're in, our, in wide zone. So they have the athleticism and they have the strength. Phillips, the, who they just drafted, I think he could be a beast. He stays healthy. Uh, so I'm a little worried about their, their front four. But outside of that, I'm not really worried about anybody else other than Howard. So I think there's there are some matchups here that we can take advantage of. Uh, with, with us on defense, though, um, I think their offensive line has some holes. Uh, they got Jackson at left tackle, who had a up and down first year. Uh, Who's their center? Scuba? I think so. It's yeah. So it, it, they're not like a dominant offensive line. I think our defensive line matches up well against their offensive line. Then it comes down to the to the skill positions with Fuller and Parker and uh, Gasecki. Um, I think that our guys can hold down the fort for a little bit to give our front four some time to, to do their magic. Um, I think. We we actually match up pretty well against Miami. I'm I'm not as worried as I thought I would be again with this game. You know, when I look at both teams that chart, I feel like this could be Elijah Moore's game. Like, yes, Howard and Barn talk Jones talk probably, probably will. You know, they will give Denzel Mims and Carter Davis a tough tough time. Both great cornerbacks, but I don't see the Dolphins have been great players to match up with more in the slot. And more than that, they have two strong edge defenders in Ogba and Jalen Phillips. And when you have great players on the outside, how do you beat them? You make them wrong every play. So attack them, make them wrong every play. So I could see the Jets utilizing jet sweeps with Elijah Moore all day long. Jet sweeps, get the ball on the outside. Take jet sweeps inside zones. Line him up on the slot, double moves, attack the Dolphins. Deep. I feel like this could be a great game for Elijah Moore. And as we were saying, if the Jets could flip the Colts and they can, you know, win up some games, this could be a game where the Jets maybe are facing off a team that will be fighting for the six wide court spot or seventh wide court spot with them. So it's a head to head matchup. And I feel like this could be a game where we could feel like the young. Jets taking over, like Michael Carter, Elijah Moore, Zach Wilson. I feel like this is a game that the Jets offense could, you know, steal for them and be very important in their schedule. And we're going to need to rack up those AFC East wins if we're going to mm-hmm. think wild card because that might be yeah. the deciding yeah. factor in the end. Yep. Who has the best division record? And I don't really like matchups against the Bills or New England. So this uh, uh, these wins against Miami are going to be uh, very pivotal. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they definitely, definitely are. Um, I think what you were talking about, Matt, were to you, you, the Dolphins, you know, they played well last year. Uh, did they make the playoffs as a wild card? I don't remember if they, they either just I, missed or they made it barely. I, I want to say they did. I want to say they did, too. Uh, 
Let me check. <laughs> yeah, we'll check on that. Either either way, they they were almost, if not a playoff team last year. And then you look at their roster, and you're you're kind of wondering how they missed it. Okay. Oh, they didn't miss. It. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, so they were almost a playoff team, and many many people were were you know touting the Dolphins on the upswing as deservedly so. And I think it speaks to Brian Flores as a coach that he did a really good job coaching the roster up to play better than it looked. So that's always daunting. I think Brian Flores is a really, really good coach. And I think he's going to be a thorn in our sides for a while. And that's why I think this game is so important because it could be the deciding factor. If the last wild card team in the AFC is coming out of the AFC East, this game is probably going to decide it. And yep. it's going to be really, really important for the Jets as a whole, if they want to be competitive and they are competitive to win their division games, the Jets have been horrible in their division for so long and it's ruined any chance they ever had as sneaking in as a wild card. And now is the time to change that. When you look at the matchup itself, um, it's going to absolutely 110% come down to shutting down the Dolphins offense completely because I'm worried about our offense versus this defense as a matchup. And I think Elijah Moore, like Vitor said, is definitely going to be the X factor and the guy that's going to have to do a lot of the heavy lifting. But I, Ogba is a if really, really good as a, a strong side end, then his job is to just penetrate and not get washed out of the play. Makai Becton's good against, you know, dang near anybody, but Ogba's really good. And I think he could get him sometimes to shut down the run a little bit. Jalen Phillips is clean up on the backside is frightening. So, it's going to, can we block? I think the corners, like Matt said, are going to lock up on the outside and the Dolphins linebackers, if there's one thing they're going to do is stop the run on inside too. So what are we going to do offensively? I, I'm not quite sure. So that leads us to the defense. And the good thing is Quinn and Williams, when in Miami turns into the Hulk, I don't know, it, like the jets, when they go to Miami, get good. Quinn and Williams gets even better and it's going to be up to him penetrating on the interior, doing everything that he can to stop the offense and slow down the Dolphins completely. I think this game is won with defensive turnovers. I think this is going to, this is going to be a Quinnen pressure force fumble that Lawson returns for a touchdown and the Jets win 24, 21. That's it's going to be a tough game. This is going to be, people are going to come out of this game. Bloody. Yeah. You, know. you got Q chasing his former quarterback Tua. Yeah. So that's, and then he's got. I, I love that matchup against uh, Eichenberg or or uh, Skura. So it's. And then you got Lawson against uh, Austin Jackson. I, yep. I like these matchups. Yeah, it's going to be a defensive this slugfest. Slugfest games and it's against really Miami. Tone for the next yeah. game. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's absolutely, absolutely going to. Um, yeah, that'll lead us into the two games in January. Uh, we got. Tampa Bay Buccaneers day after New Year's, followed by at Buffalo against the Buffalo Bills to close out the season in week 18. Um, the Jets in final game of the years in Buffalo. I think every fan that hears that shudders in their boots. Uh, just as the Jets are fantastic towards the end of the year in Miami, they are awful towards the end of the year if it is the last game of the year in Buffalo. Um, so this is going to be the, the scary, scary game. It's possible that Buffalo could be resting their starters as a playoff team. They're, they were the number two seed last year. Certainly not going to say it's out of the question. They could be the number one seed this year and they could be completely resting their starters. It could be a position where they have the number two seed locked up again, like they did this past year and they rest them in the second half. It's going to be interesting to see the positions of the two teams when this game happens as just like last year. We went in week one, um, high hopes, and we ended the year playing against the Buffalo Bills. The Jets were two and fourteen. The Bills were resting their starters. The Bills still won. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, it's a this is a matchup I don't like at all. No, <laughs> but at the same time, if we can contain Allen, if we can keep him to being a passer. I think we definitely have a shot, and I think we can definitely do it against the interior of uh, their offensive line. Uh, they're okay, but I don't think they're, they're really monsters or anything there. You got, uh, <clears throat> let's see who you got here. You got Cody Ford. Uh, you got Mitch Morris in center. Uh, you got Feliciano. 
So, I mean, they're good, but I think our guys can definitely match up with them well. And then I think we're going to have the athleticism on the back end to really contain Allen. Uh, although many teams have had athleticism and they still aren't right. able to contain Allen because Allen is that good. Yeah. Uh, as far as our their wide receivers against our corners, uh, they will have their way with us if we can't get to the Allen. Yeah, as bad as Greg Williams was last year, I feel like he did a good job against Buffalo, right? Uh, yeah. Against Josh Allen, he realized that he needed to play coverage and let Josh Allen force him to throw it short. Josh Allen is a guy that looks for the big play every snap. Uh-huh. He reads the defense from touchdown to check down. And Greg Williams played the Bills, especially in the second game last year, really well, forcing Josh Allen to take it short. So the Bills kick it six field goals against the Jets. Allen suffered fumbles in both of these games, and the Jets had like half of the talent they have on their, on their front row right now. So defensively, I really like this matchup for the Jets. I feel like the Jets will be able to contain Josh Allen and the Bills just like they did last year. But when you're talking about the Bills defense, they are really good. They are really, really good. And they got better. Yes, yes they did. Boogie yeah. Nash in the edge. I, I really, I really like this defense. And I feel like this is going to be a tough outing for the Jets. If the Jets are going to beat Buffalo, it's going to be on a low scoring game, tough game. You know, if the Jets offense doesn't surprise us all, then they're great. But all things equal, I feel like this for the Jets to win this game, it's going to be a close game, low scoring game. When it comes to defensive line depth, there aren't many that can match up to the defensive line depth that the Jets have, but the Bills definitely have some depth there. Yes, they do. Yeah. Basham, Hughes, Addison, Gregory Russo, Epinesa. They're they're, uh-huh. they're locked and loaded on uh, yeah. at the we edge. Didn't even, you didn't even mention that Oliver. No. They, yeah. You, uh, yeah. Then you got Butler and Oliver, and then Harrison Phillips, and Zimmer, and uh, Latule. Star uh, Latule yeah. is a third string. The third yeah. string. <laughs> yeah. <the> third string. <laughs> That's insane. Uh, so th- they can rotate guys in and keep that line fresh. And our offensive line is going to have their work cut out with them. Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be frightening. God bless whoever the Jets' right guard is. That's that's all I am gonna say because the 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 pressure coming through the right B gap. Good lord, Ed Oliver is gonna be coming. Greg Rousseau is gonna be coming. Boogie Basham is gonna be coming. They'll twist Epinesa just for fun. It's anybody they can send at the right guard spot, they're going to, and it's just going to be. I, I hope and hope and hope and hope that Cameron Clark is good and that by week 18 of 2021 that he is starting at right guard and playing well and we aren't as worried about Greg Rousseau and Ed Oliver and Boogie Basham and everybody else coming in and rushing from the interior because otherwise it doesn't matter that we have Mekhi Becton. It straight up doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that we have Elijah Vera Tucker at that point because they're just going to attack to the right side and just send double pressure up the middle and say, okay, we'll just drop coverage behind it, come tackle everything short, and dare Zach Wilson to run away from all this pressure. I am I really, really hope that the Jets come out of this game on the upswing, that if if this is the end of their season and they aren't sneaking in or fighting for a playoff spot, that they stay competitive, they do what they can to improve, and above all else and i'm gonna knock on my wooden desk here god please zach wilson stay healthy that's what like just don't get hurt in this game because i'm terrified of an end of the season meaningless play action pass that gets destroyed when greg russo blows past whatever person is playing right guard and takes zach wilson's head off that'd be a nightmare yeah. It Quick would. question. I, Are there still three wild card spots? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's sticking. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's still it's the same way it was. So it's one uh number one seed with a uh, home round uh home field advantage and a bye, and then three wild cards. All right, I'm good with that. I think that, that gives us the best shot <laughs> to get that third last wild card spot. Yeah. Because yep. I don't I don't see us really passing the bills i don't see us passing new england maybe miami but that's even a tough pass 
So, Miami missed the playoffs at 10 and 6 last year. Hey, yeah. This is a, the AFC is a hard division, you know, a hard and conference. Uh, it's disgusting how much better it is than the NFC. Yeah. It's it is so hard to be a good team in the AFC cuz it just you just eat yourself a life alive in your own division. I mean, you could yeah. l- look at look at the the AFC West. I, the AFC West is even tougher than our division, and and that's saying something. Uh, it's that's yeah. the that if the AFC North. Same can be said about them. The AFC South is is even the Titans are good. The Colts aren't bad. Like there's like two bad teams in the AFC, maybe, and, and everyone else is at least going to be somewhat average. I think that's fair. Yeah, it's it's not an easy road at all. Uh, but you know what? When I'm not just looking at the schedule, I think there are a lot of winnable games, and a lot of winnable games. Yep. And there might be some hard ones that you don't expect that just that turn our way. Yeah. You never know how things are going to shake out with injuries or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That said, you guys want to give a quick uh, quick record prediction overall? Yeah. Let's do it. So let's see. I think if I'm going to give a range, I would say the high point of that range would be 10 and seven. Uh, But I have a feeling it's probably going to be the lower part of my range. So maybe seven and 10. I'm going to, I'm going to go with seven and 10. Mm. Uh, I feel like beating the Panthers. And beating New England at home because Matt Life's gonna be rocky. Then you're gonna lose to the Broncos, lose to the Titans, lose to the Falcons, lose to the Patriots two and four, beat the Bengals, and Colts four and four, Buffalo five and five, but because you're gonna lose to Miami, Houston, Eagles, and Saints. Guys, this is the stretch for the Jets. Winning these three games is everything. Yep. I think I'm gonna go at nine and eight for the Jets. Nine and eight. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Well, Vitor remains the optimistic one. Um, I'm going to put him. Yeah, someone's got to be. I'm I'm going to put him at eight and nine. So not that far off, but I'm going to put him at eight and nine. Uh, I do think there is a couple of games that surprise. I think we beat the Titans. I like I'm I'm going to call my shot now. I think we beat the Titans. Okay. because it's a it's a home game. B, I think the Titans are going to want to run the ball. What is the one thing our defense does is stop the run. They don't have Corey Davis anymore. So all the focus is going to be on AJ Brown or Jonah Smith, Johnny or or Johnny Smith, right. Or Johnny Smith. They don't have, uh, you know, there's still questions on the offensive line. Um, It's, I think their offense is, and they lost Arthur Smith. They lost their coach. They lost their play caller. So there's a lot to be done on the offense. Keep it serviceable. I think Tannehill's fine. I don't think he's going to be the issue, but I could certainly see it being a situation where the Jets shut down Derrick Henry as much as they can, and AJ Brown is going to be double covered, and you're going to be betting on yeah, somebody yeah. else to to beat you know whoever is in coverage. And defensively, I think if the Jets can just block on the edge, they'll be fine. I think yep. they'll be completely and totally fine if they can just block on the edge, block Bud Dupree, and be able to run the ball. And I think you'll be able to score enough. The secondary isn't that talented. Kevin Byard's good, but he's not, you know, incredible. He's really, he's good. He's a good player. He's not in, you know, amazing. Their corners aren't anything terrifying. They lost to Dory Jackson, uh, Caleb Farley. We love him, but we have to see if he's healthy. And, yeah. you know, he's, I certainly think that he could develop into the type of player we were all talking about him and billing him as to be. And just because he's not on the Jets doesn't mean that I think any different, but he does have to stay healthy. And this is it's yet to be seen. And I think, I really think this is a winnable game. I do. I think it's, I think yeah. it's the home field advantage. I don't think they're going to blow them out, but I could certainly see the Jets winning this game. I think there'll be a couple others that surprise, but I got them at eight and nine. I think they're, they're, they're going to tail off towards the end. I think that last last four or five games are really rough. The Titans lost three guys that are crucial to their offense. Corey Davis, Eric Smith, and John Smith, who's in New England right now. Yeah. So, yeah, this is a winnable game. I really do. I think everyone looks at it and just is going to immediately go, oh, the Titans will smash the Jets. It's like, I don't think so. If anybody yeah. can stop Derrick Henry, it's it's probably our guys. Exactly. It's it's what, we, what we're made to do right now, and 
Yeah, it's going to be a hard task for sure because it is right. Derrick Henry, right? And you know, alien right. technology and all that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and uh, you don't think that that Robert Sala isn't going to go to Corey Davis and ask about Tannehill's like tendencies, or ask oh, about his his signals or his checks or or anything that they could pick up on uh, to you know help them against that offense? I mean, that's. Uh, what you got a guy that was just there. He's going to be able to give you, you know, all the inside info you need. Yeah, that's fair. I, we're, yeah, it, we'll either be knocking on the door or, or it will be done maybe in uh, early December. Yeah. I think that's, I, I'm, I'm more of a pessimist. So I'm, I'm <laughs> leaning more towards that. Uh, but there's definitely a lot of potential here to, to be knocking on the door of, of the playoffs. Yeah, they should be they, they they should be average. This is not a team. They should not have a top ten draft pick next year. No, they should not. Unless Seattle sucks. But. Well, okay. Well, yes. the The Jets pick should not be a top ten pick next year. If Seattle completely sucks, then you know, God willing. But that's I don't think the Jets will be a top ten team. I think it's a I think it's a fair schedule. I, that's just kind of the only way I can put it is it's not overtly strong. It's not overtly weak. It's not, it's, it's tough in some areas, but not horrendously. So it's easy in some areas, but not, you know, for a huge amount of stretch of time, I, it's going to be like the jets are the, the jets record is going to be just win, loss, win, loss, win, loss, almost the whole year. Yeah. I don't think there are any short weeks either. Right. Uh, where you have like a, I, I remember a few, a few years in a row, there were just some tough stretches where it was just game after game after game. Yeah. We had like three games in a matter of two weeks. Yes, I do remember that. That was the it was yeah. the Monday, Thursday, and then the one in between. Yeah, no, we don't yeah. have we don't have any of that. Uh, we don't play on Monday night. Um, we have we play the Titans on the third of October, and then on the tenth of October, my birthday. Hey, hey, uh, we play the Atlanta Falcons in London. The bye is the week after that. Uh, there's the short week between Cincinnati and Indy on Thursday night, and that's it. Yeah, uh, I guess uh, Miami could be flexed to a Monday game. It, yes, it possibly could be flexed. Um, that is, it does say that it is uh, to be determined for the official time, so it is possible that they flex it to a different day. But it would be uh, that's later in the season as well. So and if we have a short week yeah. against anybody, I would want it to be against the Jaguars. Yes. Hundred and ten percent. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Well, all right, guys. I think that does it. Um, Jets schedule for twenty twenty one is looking. I think this is like it's looking fun. It looks like it's going to be a fun season to to watch and enjoy and and see the players grow and hopefully Zach Wilson develops and Bear Tucker joins Mackay Becton to form you know the green monster on the left side and everything you know seems to be on the upswing for the future. But it's it's going to be a fun year. It's going to be a fun year. Uh, this has been the Oklahoma Drill Podcast. I've been your host, Andrew. We have our other host, Matt and Vitor, here as well. You can find me at Andrew Golden underscore 17 on Twitter. Guys, let's go ahead and drop your handles. Call it a day. You can find me at, at Zazzy Jets on Twitter. And you can find me at Vitor Paiva Am. All right. Like I said, this has been the Oklahoma Drill Podcast. Everybody, thank you for listening, and we will talk to you next week. Bye-bye.